It's working. Hello, this is the Walking Dead reviews Yay. for episode twelve, which is still, still. But I don't know why. Why is it called that? Jack has a theory. What's your theory? It's well, a... uh, they're still alive, but uh, they also found the moon shine still. So uh, that could be it too. Who knows? Yes, this <laughs> this episode was very character driven, and you know what? It's funny because I usually don't like it when it's only focused on, like, one or two characters and stuff, but I think I'm actually starting to like the episodes where they don't jump around. Like, yeah, I, I really like this Because one. it lets you focus on the characters and learn more about them. It makes the show more interesting because, like, these char like some characters you might just not know anything about them. Like, there's some characters we really don't know much about, like, not much backstory and stuff, and, you know... I'm glad that this episode gave us a chance to look at these two characters who are, yeah, you know, really very pretty. distant. You know, they're, like, almost opposites, you know. And even, you know, D D Daryl was saying that. He's like, oh, he's like, you had, you know, Christmas and, you know, all these, you know, all these things given to you. And, you know, obviously he lived his life, you know. Following his asshole brother. Yeah, you know, <laughs> as a southerner, you know, and freaking shit all the time, so didn't really you know help but yeah i like how this episode really progressed through their you know it showed a lot about them and like while they went to the when, when she wanted to get a drink and they went to the country club you saw like daryl like looting through all the stuff and then like at the end he was throwing darts at like the owners and stuff so like you really saw like the distance between like how he felt like with wealth and stuff and there she is, the Southern Belle, you know. She was from that wealthy type of family. So that and then by the end they were you know, they were able to bond. Yeah, it's almost it's breaking those old class, you know, that gap. But the you know, now in the apocalypse I guess that gap doesn't matter anymore. But it was interesting. He was like scavenging like money and all this all these they found that spoon with Washington DC, so that might yeah, be a reference. It's probably <laughs> another reference. We've had two so far. They mentioned that's where that scientist is going and now they have it on the spoon. So they're obviously making a whole bunch of references towards the place but you know obviously if you've read the comics you know what the fate of that place is i'm not sure if it'll be different for the show but i don't know it was kind of weird where he was like scavenging all of the like i don't know money he took the deed from the from the country club like he took a whole bunch of like valuable possessions and it was i don't know i don't know what Stuff he was that doing. used to be worth yeah like he threw the money wad when he when they burned down the place but other than that like you know he was collecting valuable items i was trying to figure out why he was doing that but uh Nah, it was pretty funny. It was it was good, you know, because, what was it, the first episode, no, the first or second episode back, like, you see him, and he's just not, like, unresponsive. Like, there's just no yeah. phasing him. And I think he came out, you know, he actually, you know, broke down, and, you know, it was good. You know, you kind of had a lot of that opening up and stuff. And they had, to, like, this was something that had to happen, otherwise they probably would have died, because the way he was acting, he was just, like, you know, moping along, just, you know, not even caring about living, just... And she kind of, like, snapped them out of that. Yeah, the staple for all these episodes, I feel like, after the fall of the prison, is how do these characters, you know, deal with it? And it's interesting. They all pretty much break in their own way, and they have to understand who they are. Because, you know, this in this fortress, this impenetrable fortress broke for them, and now they have to, like, come to terms with that and stuff. So now, you know, we're, gi we're given, you know, single spaces of time for us to understand what these characters motives are and everything that they're trying to do so i'm glad they focused on this and stuff it was good you know at first i was like oh you know a whole episode with the two of them it's gonna be boring but i was pleasantly surprised it, it, they kept the action you know they went to different places they weren't just hunting in the woods and stuff like you know they were originally but you know they moved to different places they kept it going and stuff and there the were a cozy enough... trunk <laughs> yeah the cozy trunk but that was the... kind of weird though like the country club it, it was like it looked like a lot of people tried to refugee there for a bit, and then, you know, they got all killed, but... Yeah, that seems weird. to be the staple of a lot of those safe safe region zones across the land, but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a pretty good episode. Again, I, li I like the fact that they, they talked about... I guess the big thing for everyone was like, oh, you know... Where, what, 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 um, what he did before the freaking, you know, apocalypse, you know... He wasn't, you know, he wasn't a cop. What, didn't he say he was a cop? He was like... Daryl Dixon's a cop. It was like, no. That, I was like, no, he's not just joking around. Cop. Yeah, he was joking with that random kid who died. But, I mean, I knew I knew he didn't do anything significant. I knew he was just wandering around with his brother. Because if you remember in season three, Meryl's like, oh, you didn't tell them we were going to rob that camp blind. It's like, yeah, I knew that they were just wandering around. They probably ran into Shane and that whole group. And then they just stayed there. And, you know, obviously then the events of the first season kick in. So, you know, I, that wasn't that much of a surprise to me. So it, I was surprised that people thought that was a surprise. Was, I mean, I don't know. It was more of a, more or less the fact that he was just accepting that fact that, 
until now he really hadn't been much of anything and like he's looking back on his life and he's seeing like how he just followed his you know pathetic brother and they did pathetic things like you know they he almost got killed over a freaking cartoon show like, when they were piss ass drunk so, yeah like, that was a pretty funny story <laughs> it was that was weird you know i guess that, that so whole... like it, he kind of came to terms with himself seeing like you know i really was nothing but i could change that now and she kind of had them you know had that mentality snap into him so. yeah he has a he's a reason to fight now you know he wanted to he even said he's like you know he could have saved the father you know he could have he could have done a lot of things he's almost like carl in a sense a little bit because carl has that regret that you know he has to do stuff and things in order to protect <laughs> people and and rick, i guess in carl's mind or i guess he used to think this that rick didn't do anything or wasn't protecting people everyone was dying under his watch and we even saw that with daryl too because like he he mentioned like how he regretted that he didn't do anything and you know how her father died and he felt like he could have done something and they just you know they just waited there for them to be attacked but yeah a lot of different stuff like that though but i'm i'm glad because now when significant plot events and when they move to places and they meet up when significant things like that happen we have characters that have gone through this stage so it'll be interesting and it'll be uh, more uh, more fun for the viewers like us to watch, so it'll be much more worth worthwhile. So, all right. So I guess that's the end of. The I think I'll give this one a nine. This was a pretty good one. I'll give, I'll it, a give it a nine too, especially you... because I totally called that moonshine thing. Yeah, he guessed it. He guessed it after she. After, yeah. yeah. After after they're in the bar and he's like, "Ain't no way, Peach Snop's gonna be your first drink." I'm like, "Oh, he's totally gonna give her moonshine." And then they go to that fucking you know shack in the middle of the woods with the distillery, and it's like, "Yep, fucking moonshine." Fucking moonshine, dude. It was like, "Yep, yeah, yeah, beautiful." That was funny. So. <laughs> So next week, uh, we'll be taking a break. I don't know if I'll just do this on my own or not because we have, like, spring break and stuff. So obviously we can't do our little sessions of Maybe doing Skype this together too. and stuff. Yeah, Skype. If You know, now my internet should be fine. Yeah, I mean, Skype, actually, I get pretty good quality on there. So we'll see. We'll uh, talk it over and find some way. But anyway, that's the end of the review. Thanks, guys, and uh, I'll see Whee! you later.